Welcome back. In this video, we will install WX widgets so we can start programming GUIs. I will show you the installation on Windows using Visual Studio, but if you need help on other platforms, then leave a comment and I will try to help. Before we begin, let me just say that installing a library can be quite frustrating the first time you do it. But it really is an essential skill and it is not hard if you know what you are doing. I will take you through the entire process step by step, so just follow along. Ok, let's get started. The first step is to download the library. So go to wxwidgets.org slash downloads. We will build it from source, so go ahead and download the source code. I will choose the Windows zip. Once that's done, extract it somewhere that makes sense to you. I will put it in a folder called Libraries under my C drive. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but try to avoid paths containing spaces because they can sometimes cause problems. Great. Now we have all the source code for WX widgets. Next, we will add a new environment variable, which points to this WX widgets directory. So go to your system environment variables. And then add a new variable. We will call it WX win and for the value, put in the path to your WX widgets directory. This variable will simplify things in Visual Studio later. Ok, back to the WX widgets directory. Let's first take a look inside the lib folder. Right now it only contains a few files, but this is where the compiled library will go once we build it. So let's do that now. We have to go back to the main directory and then open the build folder. Next, open the folder called msw, which is short for Microsoft Windows. There are a bunch of files here, but if you scroll down, you should see solution files for different versions of Visual Studio. We will use the most recent one, so go ahead and open wxvc16.sln. To build WX widgets, we have to choose a configuration and a platform. You can choose debug and release, either as a static library or a dynamic library. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it, it is a topic for another video. I will build WX widgets as a static library for 32-bit and 64-bit platforms. First, choose debug configuration and set the platform to Win32. Then click build and build solution. Once that's done, a new folder called vclib has been created inside the lib folder. It contains the debug static libraries and you can see that they are suffixed with a D for debug. Now go back to Visual Studio, change to release configuration and build the solution again. In the vclib folder, we now also have the release static libraries. Finally, we will build the library for 64-bit platforms as well. In the lib folder, you should now also have a folder for the 64-bit version of the library. Great! We have now built WX widgets from source. Let's create a simple project to check that everything works. 
head back to Visual Studio and create an empty C++ project. Start by adding a new source file. You can call it whatever you want. Then paste the code I have put in the description of this video. Yes, copy and pasting is a terrible way to learn programming, but this is purely to check if everything works. As you can see, Visual Studio is not happy. And that's because we have to tell it where it can find the WX widgets header and library files. Right click on your project and choose properties. First make sure that configuration is set to all configurations and platform is set to all platforms. Then go to the settings for C and C++. These settings won't show up if you don't have a C++ file in your project. That's why we added one before. At the top where it says additional include directories, we have to tell Visual Studio where it can find the WX widgets header files. We will add two directories here using the environment variable we defined earlier. The first directory is wxwin slash include and the second one is wxwin slash include slash msvc. You can see down here that the wxwin variable has been expanded to the path of the wx widgets directory. Next, expand the linker settings and click on system. Here we have to change the subsystem from console to Windows. This lets the compiler know that we don't want a console application, we want a Windows GUI application. Click apply. Finally, we have to tell the linker where it can find the static libraries. And that depends on the target platform. So first, set it to Win32. Then go to the general linker settings. Under additional library directories, we have to add the location of the static libraries for 32-bit platforms. As we saw earlier, they are at wxwin slash lib slash vclib. Click apply and then change the target platform to x64. The static libraries for 64-bit platforms are at wxwin slash lib slash vc x64 lib. That's it. Now the program should run in both debug and release mode on 32-bit and 64-bit platforms. Fantastic! We have successfully built WX widgets from source and set up a project which links to it. For some other libraries, you would also have to tell the linker which .lib files your program will use. For WX widgets, that is not required, and that's because it uses a special feature of the Microsoft Visual C++ compiler. I hope you are still with me after all of that. In the next video, we will cover the absolute basics of WX widgets and create a simple window. See you next time.